What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Happy New Year to everyone as well. So I took the New Year, New Me thing quite literally for Shark Bites and some of the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you might have noticed that Shark Bites has had a little bit of a makeover. We've got a brand new logo and channel banner and the branding from here on out is going to be pretty consistent. I really like it but let me know what you think in the comments. Big thanks to Joe Priv for doing those designs for me. If any of you want any graphics design work done then please do get in touch and I can pass his details on to you. It also looks like we've got a fair a few new subscribers since the last video. That Ocean Ramsey video did get pretty wild. <laughs> a few of Ramsey's fans decided to plow into the comments, of course. I'm pretty sure one rando called me Piers Morgan. <laughs> Steve Backshall also turned up in the comment section, which was a big surprise. I mean, admittedly, he did come to Ramsey's defense for some reason. I pinned his comment to the top anyway, so you can read it and also read my response to it as well. Okay, today then we're returning with a pretty popular series here on Shark Bites, which is of course, Shark Scientist Reacts to Shark Attacks. For those new to the channel, in these videos, I look at clips of sharks from the internet and analyze them and basically give you my thoughts on what I think has gone down. Admittedly, not all of them are attacks. Some of them are just close calls with sharks, but today we definitely have a few attacks. Gentle reminder for you all though, these incidents are incredibly rare. I'm not saying they don't happen, but the chances of you being bitten by a shark are very, very slim. Humans kill far more sharks every single year in comparison to how many sharks bite humans. So let's be very clear on that one as well. Right, okay, let's have a look at some of these clips. So up first, we've got the Heather Boswell incident all the way back in 1994, the year I was born. And that's clearly why the footage looks like it was filmed on a potato. <laughs> Right, so it's a bit shaky, but you can kind of see here Heather splashing around in the water after having been separated from the group that she was swimming with. She's on a naval ship, I believe, and occasionally the crew will get the chance to go and have an open water swim. So this is what's happened today. Some of the crew have headed out for a swim, and they've been swimming around for about an hour and a half before someone has seen the shark. Apparently another chap in the swimmer group was bitten first on the leg before he punched it on the nose and it let go before the shark turned its attention then to Heather, who had isolated herself from the rest of the group. It's that classic predator strategy there, going for the individual that's separated from the group. We always see it in wild predators when they target their normal prey, and it's usually because that individual is either sick or injured, so it's going to be an easier thing to take down. Again here though, guys, this is why it's really, really important to stay within your group when you're swimming and you're trying to stay shark safe. Try your best not to isolate yourself. So in the footage here, we're seeing Heather initially receive a bite to her right leg, which I imagine is the initial test bite from that shark. We don't actually see the second bite because the camera operator drops the camera down, but by the time it comes back up again, we see this brief shot here of Heather being helped into the rib with just a ton of blood in the water. According to eyewitnesses, when the camera wasn't filming because the guy had dropped it, Heather was bitten on the left leg and then pulled under the water. And then she fought away to the surface and managed to reach the outstretched arms of other crew members who tried to pull her from the mouth of that shark. It was at that point that Heather heard a pop thinking that her knee had dislocated when in fact her leg had actually been severed. So analyzing this from a behavior perspective, it would be difficult to say this was a case of mistaken identity. The water clarity was apparently clear and by all accounts, there are no other normal prey species around. The shark has probably been drawn in due to the splashing around over the hour and a half that the crew were in the water. And because this is in the middle of nowhere open ocean, it's entirely possible that that shark has never encountered a human before. Prey density in the ocean is gonna be incredibly scarce for a large white shark like this one. So this individual might have been just extremely hungry and was looking for the nearest opportunity to feed. Sadly, it turned out to be Heather. I read somewhere that the shark was eventually shot and killed by another crew member, and Heather, after losing her leg, was basically fighting for her life before then being taken to hospital where she could eventually become stable. A pretty wild one there to start off. I know that's gonna generate a lot of conversation, so comment away, please let me know what you think below. Okay, next up, we've got this quick one here, so I'm just gonna loop it for you all. So we've got a kayaker here, I think in South Australia, just going about his day, when this white shark decides to pop up and give him a bit of a fright. <laughs> I think I saw someone in the comments for this video saying, for sale, bright green kayak, slight brown stain. <laughs> The guy in the video thinks that this shark might be around 12 feet, but I'd probably agree, maybe even just a touch smaller. I think this one looks like a younger individual. I'm not gonna put this one down as an attack though. I think this is more of a curiosity thing from this younger individual. That kayak paddle is probably slapping and splashing on the surface of the water, which is making low frequency sounds like that of an injured animal, and the shark has come up to check it out. Sharks are really curious animals and will come in nice and close to investigate certain objects in their environment that they are unfamiliar with. It's pretty quickly realized whatever that 
paddle is, is not something that it wants to eat because you can see in this next clip here, it's just mooching around in the water, checking out that kayak pretty closely before it eventually heads off. The crazy thing about this one though is how close this all occurred to shore. You can see at the start of the video, there's a boat and a structure there. So this is happening very, very close to land, which is pretty wild. <laughs> Okay, next we've got a spearfisher again here. These ones are always hideous to watch. <laughs> and he's got his GoPro mounted on his spear gun here, just filming the whole experience. So as he's swimming along, something hard hits him from behind, enough for him to drop that spear gun. And we can see very briefly he's lost one of his fins before he really quickly dives down to get that spear gun back. Very smart move. The shark comes back for a second pass here as the guy whacks it. Looks like he's hit it on the gills, which is a really great area to target if you're in this situation, by the way. That's a super sensitive area on the shark. After a little bit more flailing, the shark comes back a little warier this time, probably after that gill punch, before he then jabs it in the side with his spear gun to give it the final scare, and then the shark heads off for good. The video then continues for another five minutes as this guy swims backwards to shore. Can you imagine those five minutes as you're just swimming backwards? <laughs> oh, jeez. All great tactics here from this spearfisher though to try and deal with a pretty overzealous great white shark. The punch in the gills and then the jab from the spear gun are both things I would definitely recommend doing. The spearfisher also commented on the video as well saying this was the first time he had ever taken his GoPro out with him spearfishing. And also that he had borrowed a pair of fins from his friend. His usual fins were about a foot and a half long and his friend's fins were three foot long. So can you imagine if he was wearing the foot and a half long fins that were much shorter than the ones he was wearing? He'd have lost his foot. I think it's tough to say if this one is a potential predation attempt or whether it's just territoriality. It could be either in my opinion. We also don't know whether the guy has any fish on him in a bag. I can't see any when he drops that spear gun for a second, but it's tough to see. Let me know what you think in the comments for this one. I can't make my mind up. Up next now, and we've got the infamous Mick Fanning clip. It all happens pretty quickly again on this one, so I'm just going to keep looping it for you. So Mick is out in the break here, waiting in between sets for the next wave before a white shark comes at him from the side. There's that characteristic splashing and rolling around at the surface, which is really typical of shark bites on surfers. The horrendous part here, though, is the bit where we don't know what happens is we've got about a 10 second gap where our view is blocked by one of the waves coming in. Eventually that wave breaks and we can see Mick swimming away from the incident. I think the fact that this was being live streamed around the world as well, people were literally watching this happen live. How horrendous is that? Thankfully Mick was completely unscathed from this incident. I have no idea how. He did go on to describe what happened in those 10 seconds that were blocked by the wave. The shark apparently was thrashing around and he thinks he punched it a few times in the head, but it still felt like it was dragging him under the water. It's likely that the shark probably got a bit snarled up in Mick's surfboard leash that was attached to his ankle. And that's why Mick felt like he was getting pulled under the water. I mean, luckily for him, the leash eventually snapped and he was able to swim away. So there were loads of stills that went viral of this clip around the world. And if we pause it just here, this is one that was used quite a lot. So I'm pretty sure this is the caudal fin and not the dorsal fin, which a lot of people were claiming back when this video first came out. You can see the notch on the upper trailing edge there. The dorsal fin is actually seen just before here, which you can see is significantly smaller and stubbier than that previous fin. The whole incident though is absolutely wild and I can't quite believe it was all broadcast to the world. I think I'm going mistaken identity here though in an area where white sharks regularly predate on seals at the surface in murky water, all clouded up by the breaking waves. I think the fact that he's come away from it completely unscathed is just crazy. Okay, next one. Looks like we've got a juvenile nurse shark here. I'm not quite sure where this is filmed though. Pretty quickly, you can see this guy here, which apparently is the dive instructor getting right up in that nurse shark squirrel and trying to take a picture of it. Of course, the nurse shark is not happy about this overcrowding and retaliates by latching onto the dive instructor's arm. I am not surprised by this at all. <laughs> He manages to rip it off his arm pretty quickly before then throwing it into this guy's face and then grabbing his regulator tubes, nearly yanking his regulator out of his mouth. Who is this instructor? <laughs> So this is obviously your classic defensive bite here. This nurse shark is clearly stressed about the divers surrounding it. Probably the flash from the camera hasn't helped and it's just lashed out in defense. Nurse sharks can be irritable little buggers when you piss them off. So this is your reminder to not overcrowd them and watch them from a respectful distance. Even the little ones have got a really mean bite and can pack a punch. And you can see here at the end of the video, this shark has gone through the rash vest and managed to draw some blood from this dive instructor's arm. Watch safely from a distance then guys, even with the little sharks that you don't think can hurt you. So this last one now that I'm going to show you is actually a pretty relevant one based on that Ocean Ramsey video I did a few weeks back. If you haven't seen that, by the way, make sure you click this link here and give it a watch. Anyway, it involves a great white shark, a group of divers and a whale carcass. So let's take a look. 
Okay, so it's a little bit murky and the footage isn't that clear at the start of this video here, but what you're seeing is one of the divers swimming down towards a great white shark and attempting to ride it by grabbing onto the back of the dorsal fin. He doesn't quite reach the dorsal, so just decides to run his hand down the back of the shark instead. And then a few moments later, the shark decides it's had enough of this and heads up to the surface towards that diver who was trying to grab onto its dorsal fin and in no uncertain terms tells him to back the hell up. Slow down here, you can see it gives a slight warning bite before turning off into the distance. This situation could have been so, so much worse. Of course, what we're seeing here is well and truly a territoriality warning bite. The shark is clearly not happy with that diver at all. It's probably a combo of the shark not being happy about being harassed and then also not being happy with those divers around a potential food source in that whale carcass. So it's just decided to come up and tell them to move away. This is why it's really important not to harass white sharks, guys, and also why it's really not safe to be in the water around a whale carcass. Incidents like this happen. Happen. We've seen it with that shark week glass stunt and now we've seen it here as well and I have to stress it's not a safe situation to be in especially when there are large predatory sharks in the water. This man is a fool for doing this and for all of you watching just please please don't do this. <laughs> See there we are I'm scolding that man just like I've scolded Ocean Ramsey. <laughs> So there we go, guys. That is Shark Scientist Reacts to Shark Attacks 3. Don't leave yet, though, because if you're a new subscriber to Shark Bites, make sure you stick around to the end screen of this video where you can watch two more videos just like this one. Both of those videos on the end screen have some absolutely wild encounters with sharks on, so they are definitely worth the watch. So what did you think of some of those clips then? Which one freaked you out the most? Do you agree with my analysis on the incidents? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you've seen any other clips like these ones on the internet, please do forward them my way, and I will try and include them in the next video we do on this. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below. I can still see there's loads of you that aren't subscribed to Shark Bites yet, so it would really mean a lot if you hit that big red subscribe button and that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then though, see you next time.